Hey, hey, it's Mr. A, back at you with another art video. Today, let's take it step by step, because we're drawing stairs in one point perspective. As with all one point perspective drawings, we'll start by locating a horizon line. This one is near the top and it's horizontal. I'll place my vanishing point near the center. I'll begin by locating the base of the left staircase with a horizontal line and then connecting the corner on the right edge to the vanishing point with what we call a converging line. With the horizontal line, I'll describe where the wall begins and where it meets the ground. This will be the back of both staircases. At the intersection of both of those lines, I can extend a vertical line up to describe the height of this staircase. I'll make a small adjustment to extend the height above the horizon line. With that settled, I'll move on to locate the baseline for the right staircase. After extending a converging line, I'll then put a horizontal line to show where the front edge of the staircase will be located. With some of the basic dimensions of each staircase located, I can now get to work on the left staircase. I'm gonna use a horizontal line to describe the total height of the triangle shape that we're gonna be making that will contain the staircase. With that in place, I'm going to use the ruler to extend the left edge of the front to the vanishing point. That will give me my leftmost dimension as it extends back towards the wall. Where that line intersects, I can then bring a vertical line to complete that shape. Finally, I'll connect the far corners, creating a wedge-shaped container for what will become my staircase. Notice how the front-facing corners of each stair are going to align with that triangle shape that we just made. Instead of trying to guess where each stair lands on that line, we'll use the back line or the vertical height to divide it out equally using a ruler. Now all that's left to do is to simply connect those points with a vanishing point and extend it out onto the angled lines of the container. Where it intersects will be the front facing corner of each stair. Take your time lining up the vanishing point and extending through those equally marked stairs. It's important that they intersect with that new angle on the front of that wedge. I'm gonna go back in with my pencil just to make sure I don't lose track of them before I extend vertical lines down from that new point directly to the lower layer underneath it. Make sure these lines stay vertical. If you're not careful, mistakes will start to multiply themselves as you connect these lines to new locations. Now you can see it, you've created one full profile shape of those stairs. What's left to do is to carefully transfer that design to the other side of the form. I need to be especially careful of using a horizontal line to transfer each one of those points across. If I start to dip, which you may notice I do a little bit, I'm going to start to end up with distortions or mistakes that will be difficult to identify later on. So do your best to keep those extremely horizontal by comparing it with either the horizon line or the top or bottom of your paper. We've done a great job locating and transferring those points to the other side. However, we need to keep track of which ones are the front top corner and which ones are the far corner of each step. So I'm walking up the stairs with my pencil and just making a point where I know that I'll be drawing the downward and upward faces of each stair. Just like we accomplished on the right side, we're gonna be using vertical lines to describe those front facing steps. And then when those are complete, we'll then connect those same points with the vanishing point to create the final forms that will resolve these stairs. At this step, you might start to notice that some of the corners that you've carefully created may not be perfect. If you were using a drafting board with a T-square or another angle implement that would give you a perfect 90 degree angle in relationship to your horizon line, you wouldn't have this problem as often. However, if you're just using a regular ruler, there's nothing wrong with making slight adjustments, using your eraser, or even redrawing a few key lines if it's creating a major problem. In this case, you can see an example of that. When I connect it to the vanishing point, there's a slight disagreement where those lines would come together. 
At this stage, since it's in pencil, I'm not too worried about it, but I have my eye on it. So when I do go over this in marker, it's definitely going to be resolved a little bit clearer. Don't get too hung up on any mistakes because we've accomplished a really cool illusion. We have a full 3D one point perspective set of stairs that are coming out towards us. And when we erase some of the construction lines, that illusion is going to really pop even more. At this point, be careful not to erase too much of your original drawing, but if you have to, as if I did, you can always go over it with pencil again to firm up or darken the lines, or wait until later to go over it with a fine point marker or pen. With one staircase down, let's move on to the second. Let's start by using a horizontal line to define the height of this block we'll carve it out of. I'm using a line that shows the angle of the stairs, and that goes in between that front corner and the height. That intersection will allow me to pull out a converging line and then connect it with that front corner, but being sure that it's parallel to that first angle we drew. At that far intersection, I dropped a vertical line which will show us the height of this wedge. It's important because we'll use that again later to divide our steps. It's important to make your divisions for your steps along that vertical height instead of on the angle. When we create this wedge-like container for the stairs, we take the vertical separations and extend them out towards that angle, and that intersection is where that far and outermost corner of each stair is going to be. As you finish those up, we're then going to take a vertical line at each new intersection point and drop it down to the lower level. Keep those nice and vertical. That will keep your illusion in line. Now that we've drawn the shape of the stairs, we're going to wrap it around the wedge form. We're going to extend those lines by connecting them to the vanishing point and stopping where they intersect with the far end of the wedge shape. Think of it as a container for our stairs. For this next stage, we have to complete the vertical and horizontal sections. And as you notice here, I'm having a little trouble making sure those are accurate. So before I try to do those on my own, I'm going to actually use the measurements I took before and transfer them to the back vertical line that measures the height for the whole wedge. This can be a really helpful way to transfer measurements throughout the space of your drawing so you don't have to guess. With these drawn in, I can now use horizontal lines to intersect with the different parts of the stairs to make sure that I have those spot on. Just like in the other stairs, we want to make sure to be careful to keep horizontal lines perfectly horizontal, vertical lines vertical, and converging lines always hitting that vanishing point. The beauty of a system like One Point Perspective is that it limits your choices to just three types of lines, vertical, horizontal, and converging. With one out of three odds, even if you guess which line to draw, if you cross that one off the list, if it wasn't right, you only have two more to go. So using your ruler to work through your drawing, you can start to identify places that don't make any sense. Erasing is often a time when you figure out that there might be a line that's slightly off, it's connecting to the wrong area, and in this case, I noticed that I just straight up forgot to draw the last converging line. Now, how about that for a step-by-step -step tutorial? If you've made it this far without falling down the stairs, you're doing great. One point perspective can be pretty complex, but we want to stay safe. So on this last set of stairs, we're going to put in a railing. Starting from that front corner of the wedge, where I still have a little bit of pencil marked out, I'm going to draw a vertical post. Now, I want to remember how tall it is. This one's about two inches, and it's also going to be a set distance away from that front step, which is a little over a half inch. Using the same vertical marking, I'll create the top post with two vertical lines. And then I'm going to try to connect them with the actual railing. But getting the angle right is really important. Now, if I connect both of the tops, it's going to end up not parallel, shown by that red line. Instead, what I want to do is use my ruler to get that front face of our wedge and slowly move it out, keeping it parallel till I'm 
aligned with the top of the post and keeping that same parallel angle. And once that's confirmed, I can draw it in. All that's left to do is to create a horizontal line to the top of the post. And that will allow you to keep the same parallel angle of the railing while allowing your post to be backed off of the top of the stair. For the second railing that's a little bit farther away, all the hard work is done. We're simply going to use the converging line now to map out where it's going to be located on the far side. And then instead of guessing at the height, we'll actually use another converging line from the top of that front post. And I just kind of guessed at that parallel line, making sure that it was pretty spot on. And then I used a converging line to show where it's going to bend. If you've followed along this far, you've noticed a pattern. We're using those three types of lines to constantly transfer measurements and to push things back in space or bring them forward to us. But by using this system, you'll be able to nail down very complex and very convincing illusions if you just stick with those three lines, vertical, horizontal, and converging lines. The only exception to that is when we have to do things like these wedges or create the parallel lines that relate to them. Just remember that those lines don't point to a vanishing point and they're not vertical or horizontal. Learning the differences between all the lines can take some time and practice, but if you've been able to follow along and get a convincing result, you're well on your way. If you enjoyed this video or even learned something, be sure to like and subscribe to Art with Anderson. If you participated in this activity, I'd love to see how it turned out. Hit me up on Instagram at artwithanderson. Tag me so I can give you some feedback and maybe give you a shout out on the next video. Thanks for watching.